Hey guys, welcome to my Friday live. As you guys are jumping on, definitely say hello. Um, today though, we are going to dive into what we were working on fr or Wednesday. Oh boy. It has been a very long week. So hello, Nancy. Thank you for joining. Um, so yes, uh, we are, you know, in honor of the upcoming IOD release. I have been playing around with all the old IOD molds. Are they really that old? Probably not. Um, but I thought it would be a great opportunity to just uh, play around with the molds and then um, create some garden art today. So Wednesday, we used, let me pull it out, the Hidden Hollow Mold. And if you guys have not used this, it is, they're amazing. They're little doors. And I have actually used them on a couple different pieces and to upcycle like a silver teapot. I put it on, I've been putting it on different items. So they are, <laughs> there's a lot of purposes. So what I did is I cast three of them and I painted them up on Wednesday. Here they are. They turned out so stinking cute, you guys. And yes, I love them. So let's see who's all on. We have Shelly, Kim, West Coast, Contessa, Amanda. Hello, hello, Penny, Nancy. Thank you all for joining. And um, if you guys are watching on YouTube, if you could also watch on Facebook, that would be great. Um, I would definitely appreciate it. Uh, you can continue to watch on YouTube, but just put it on um, Facebook as well. So I added a bunch of detail to each of these. Uh, when I say I added detail, I just colored in with all different fusion paints. And so my question to you guys, do you think I should add a little bit of dark wax to these just to bring out a little bit more detail or do you think it, it's good? I was thinking about it you know, adding a bit of dark wax, then wiping back. I'm trying to see where my, here's my dark wax. All right. We have Barbara on. Uh, Shelly says, happy Friday morning, everyone. Hello. Hello. Look at that. Um, it looks like a sunrise in your picture. Awesome. Uh, Barbara says, good morning from Washington. Hello. Hello, Barbara. We have Beth on checking in from Wyoming. Good morning to all. Looks like we have Joy from Pennsylvania. And uh, Amanda said, I saw, try the dark wax, might give it a nice weathered look. Okay, so these are actually going to go out into my garden, you guys. Uh, so let's start there. And then what we did is we cast a bunch of the toadstool. So I thought, why don't we play around with that as well? So let's go ahead and set that aside. And then let's start here with the dark wax. All right. Let me, where did I, I'm like, I, I know I have some paper towel. Um, so first and foremost, before I go any further, did you guys see the IOD release is officially scheduled? Um, I have heard that, uh, people were getting very impatient. So I understand because I want the release to happen too, <laughs> but all right. I scheduled a time for the release. So what I'll be doing is going live and I will be showcasing all the items. And then I'm going to show you guys some projects that I've been working on. And I will also have a video to go live. Um, so normally my videos go live at 5 p.m. It will go live when the release is happening. So just be aware of that. And it is jam packed full of all the release. So super excited. Um, Amanda says, so excited for next Friday. West Coast says, woohoo, yippee. Um, Amanda says, your live is the same time as theirs, though, isn't it? I don't want to have to choose. Y you can choose, you can do whatever you want. But yes, I do go live at the same time. Um, and I do that because I've always done that. So 
Um, when they're releasing, I actually um, start off just chatting. I let them do kind of their release on my, and then I do it after. So uh, Amanda says, actually, I have one playing on Facebook and the other on YouTube, LOL. Um, I actually thought it was today and then I saw the date. Yes. So it is next Friday, guys. Um, just know that uh, today we are going to play around with what we started on Wednesday. Um, so let's see. I just want to make sure. Joan's on. Um, hello, hello. Bespoke by Nelly. Good morning from Minnesota. Awesome. Thanks for joining. Okay, so what we're going to use on these, so if you guys are just jumping on, Wednesday we took the Hidden Hollow Mold, we cast all three doors, and we painted them up. We also cast all the toadstools. So to finish off these, I was asking if we should add a bit of dark wax, and or, well, quite a few of you said yes. So we are going to add the wax. Uh, Joan says, we need to start working on stuff. It's getting late for spring. That's what I have been hearing. That is honestly the consensus that I've been hearing. And I get it. Um, keep in mind, it's not, I think it had a lot to do with the shipping. Uh, so I don't know what all transpired, but it's not like they would purposely do anything um, to hold the products hostage. So um, I think they thought they were going to have a much sooner, quicker, faster, and then they didn't. So let's start with this door um, because this is out of the doors that I painted. Not that I don't love this one. This is my least favorite. So I always have a favorite. Not in my children, though. I love them equally. <laughs> projects. I always have a favorite. So this is my least favorite. So let's go in and we're going to add just a, a bit of dark wax to this. And let me just go do that really quick. And I want to get it into all the details <clears throat> of the mold. And I think it's, uh, I almost am liking it already a little bit better. Uh, Shelly wants to know if we've heard from Stephanie. I have not. Um, I know Paige said she was going to try to reach out to her. I have not re I have not heard and she has not been on our lives. So it's kind of, I feel bad because you guys, Stephanie has been a regular on my lives since I started doing them. She would always be on right away. So if anybody knows Stephanie or if Stephanie watches the replay, Definitely reach out to one of us. Okay, so I put the wax on. Now I'm going to take the paper towel and wipe away the excess to get it all in that. I just want to get it all into the details of the mold. Let me do that. Oh gosh, I really like it, you guys. Hey, Corrine, thanks for joining. All right, Linda says, uh, good morning from Eden, Texas. Joan says, to make it even worse, Easter is early this year. Oh, really? Brenda says, good morning from Nebraska. Hello, hello. All right, guys. So I'm wipe. I got it in all that detail, and honestly, I really like how it made that. Like the mold seems like all the details really even popped all the further. Hello, Teresa. So I'm liking it. Let's do it to the next one. And now that we finish it, I will take photos of these and put them. Put it out on Facebook so you guys can see it. Amanda says she loves that. Yes, I do too. All right, let's do the next one. I always kind of dab off some of the wax so I'm not starting with such a heavy amount. <laughs> and let's just go in and I'm going to... I just feel like wax makes everything all so much better. And I love Debbie's or the DIY wax. So like, keep in mind all the products that we're using. Um, you can find them on my website, which is www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. So always know that. 
And I cannot wait to hear you once I do the release next Friday or they do the release. I can't wait to hear what your favorite item was. I have a, I have a couple favorites, guys. I'll be honest. One I was asking for for quite a while, or I've been kind of saying that I really wanted it because I work with, you know, a lot of small pieces. So I'm really excited to hear what you guys all think. Okay. Oh, this one too, you guys. Oh, it's so good. So good. I love how the dark wax really got into all that detail. Love it. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, let's do this last one. So I'm going to show you the before. I probably should have been showing you the befores for the other ones. Oh, let's see here. Regina says, that looks awesome. Um, yeah, Joan. Oh, uh, Penny says, yeah, Joan, it is. And I think that it is what makes it worse is a short spring. Yeah. Hello, Sheila. I love these fairy doors. I know these fairy doors are awesome. So I am going to put them in my flower beds. I think I'm going to be putting them in like on trees and I want to, I don't want them to completely pop. I want them to be kind of like little hidden doors. So as people are walking through my garden, it's almost like a little nice surprise. So that's what I want to use them for. Um, yes. So Amanda asked if the products will be available on my site next Friday and they will. So at 1130 central time, which wherever you are, then you just have to match up with that. They will automatically be available at 1130. All of them will be activated. So you guys can start shopping right away. Um, Oh gosh, Joan says, oh, this is pretty bad. I think I bought that mold last year, but I never used it. Oh boy. All right, so we're gonna add the dark wax to this one and you guys saw the before. So now I'm gonna show you the after, after I add the wax and then wipe off the excess. And what I'm trying to do is just really get that dark wax really into all the details of the mold. And we painted all these molds with um, the Fusion. So it has the built-in top coat. All right, uh, what wax are you using? I, oops, I am using DIY's dark wax. And the one thing too that I really love about the DIY waxes too, and I think you probably can do it with others. I always keep clear when I'm using colored wax. That way if there's too much dark wax happening, you can add a little clear to take away some of that dark wax or the white wax. So if all of a sudden you're like, ah, that is a great way to really control your waxes. The other thing too, is if you're just going in with wax, I always suggest you add like the clear, just a little clear ahead of time and then go in if you're not going to seal it. Like these are all sealed, but if you weren't going to seal it, that's what I would recommend. All right. Uh, West Coast Contessa said she can't wait for the mushrooms. I know. Me too. I also grabbed some books and I thought that would be kind of fun too to put them on some books because I have some little ones. So, so there's probably going to be a couple things. Um, and yesterday I officially um, put out my trailer um, and I... <laughs> announced my very first episode is going to go live on March 14th for my podcast, guys. Uh, I don't know what happened, but I know that a couple people watched my very first episode, even though it was not live. So I I don't know. Um, don't know how that actually happened or transpired, but I took it down immediately. And so then you guys have to wait till the 14th. All right, so here it is, you guys. So you can see it just adds a lot of uh, dimension to it. I love it, I love it. Okay, so those are done. Let me 
wipe the, or pull this up, clean this up here. All right, so what we did then is we added the dark wax to that. I think it looks great. Uh, Kelly says, one week from today, I will have twin great-granddaughters. I am so excited. Woo-hoo, congrats, Kelly. Uh, Bespoke by Nelly says, the wax really brings out the depth and shadows, makes it richer and more realistic. I agree with that. That is totally true. And I'm going to just show that on here. I completely agree. Amanda says, the wax is so perfect on those. I totally agree. So gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Penny said, I saw it. You were awesome. Okay. How did you guys see it? I don't know. I did not eat. I had it like on list. I had it private. So I have no idea how people saw my very first podcast, but hopefully I took it down <laughs> because it was supposed to be um, listed out on the 14th. Uh, we were practicing um, putting it on YouTube and somehow I think like 12 people might have seen it. So I don't know. Penny was one of them. <laughs> But thanks for your feedback, Penny. I appreciate it. So she said it was awesome. Um, I saw the trailer, not the actual podcast. Yeah, that's right. I was supposed to just put out the trailer. Um, okay, so Kim said she only saw the announcement video. Okay. I, again, I don't know how just a few people saw it. So it was kind of odd, but um, one person commented, and that's how I knew that there was something. Because I was like... How did anybody know about it? Or like, cause anyways, it, it like made me, you know, kind of freak out. All right. Um, but that's okay. Oh, Kelly said she also watched it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks guys. Well, that's all right. Everybody else gets to watch it on the 14th. I hopefully, hopefully it's not out there anymore. Okay. So what we did is we molded a bunch of the toadstools and you guys, this is by far one of my favorite molds. Okay. Um, how are you attaching the doors to the trees? So what I am thinking, so I am going to, I am going to start off with adding, um, type bonds. You guys, I love type bond. So I'm going to try to Put them on with type bond. Um, this stuff, it is like it says multi-surface glue, um, dries clear, paintable. I mean, honestly, it is so good. The only thing I'm worried about is in the winter, like we get such harsh winters. Like, will it like stay? Like, I don't know if it's gonna stay in the winter. I know all summer it should be fine. Um, they're gonna be like in areas where it's a very flat surface. So like a limb had been cut off, I'm going to attach it there. So we will see. We will see. Um, oh, so Kelly says, when I went back to comment on it, it was already gone. Okay, Kelly. Thanks. You guys will have to comment on the podcast on the 14th uh, for those of you that actually saw it. So um. Oh, Carol says she watched the trailer. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. So this is my very first time doing anything like that. And it's very different, you guys. I just have to say it is very, very different. Uh, talking into a microphone, having a bunch of thoughts and um, yeah, but it's fun. I'm having fun. So um, now that we kind of figured out what was going, we don't even know what happened. Um, I'm just going to get them scheduled and then hopefully by having it scheduled, nobody will see it. But then I got nervous because I was like, anyway, I'm like, I have to be careful if I do unlisted videos if, um, cause that's what it was unlisted. And I'm like, I don't know. But, um, uh, Anna says just coming in. Hi, what mold is this? This is told stool, you guys. So this is definitely one of my favorites. Um, I love mushroom hunting. And one of my very favorite mushrooms is the morale mushroom. And I was so excited that they actually included the morale mushrooms on here, you guys. These are tasty little guys and um, they go for a whole lot of money if you can find them. Uh, so I know like at the Madison, Wisconsin farm market over there, they, they have people who sell these mushrooms and you get a good price for them. 
So get those. I love these big ones as well. So we're going to talk about how we want to paint them. I'm going to, oh, I forgot to grab my whole container of paints, but I'm thinking first and foremost, I want to, so I'm going to put a couple of these. I'm just going to pull them all out here. Okay. So I did have a little, a couple little dribbles over, but it just, um, yeah, these, that was fine. So put that there. All right, so we're using now the toadstool mold. All right, the first thing um, somebody suggested that we do, um, because I want to put these at a base of a tree and I want to stick them in the ground, I thought they'd be kind of fun. Is there a link where to get the mold? Amazon? No, yeah, it's my website. So www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. Um, here it is. That's where you guys can buy all the products. All right. Okay, let me go back to the comments. Okay, perfect. All right, so what I was thinking is this. So some, I was trying to figure out what wire to use. And honestly, I don't have any, I think what would probably work really well would be old hangers. I really think that probably would work really, really well. Um, I don't have any old hangers. So what I'm going to do is I am going to actually just use um, floral wire. I'm going to try it. We'll see if it works. Okay. So I'm going to double up the floral wire. Kind of make it a little bit more sturdy. And then we are going to, so we're going to see if this works because I did not have this when we cast them. So somebody on Wednesday said we could drill a hole in the very bottom of this. And then um, I'm going to put some glue on here and we're going to feed it in. And then we're going to have it to be able to stick in the ground. And this feels really sturdy. So I think that'll be good. And I just need to stick it into the soil. You know, right, I'm going to put it at the base of a tree. So I think it's going to look super cute. So I want to do this all first to see if we can get that going. And if that works, then we're going to use the Gorilla Glue, clear Gorilla Glue is what we're using. That stuff works really good too. Um, could you hold a fairy door up so I could show my granddaughter? Absolutely. Here are the two fairy door. Well, there's three of them, but here are two of them. Super cute. All right. Susan White. Okay, I think I'm going to block this person. We're going to block this user. I don't know who this is or why. They are sending a link. Do not click the link, guys. Um, we have a scammer. Yes, we do. <laughs> we have a scammer. We're getting rid of her right now, okay? We're going to get rid of her. Um, I'm going to see here. I'm going to delete this comment. Okay. Let me just go in and delete these comments. All of a sudden, I'm like, who is Susan White? Um. Okay, so I just want to get rid of these comments because I don't want you guys <laughs> clicking on any of these spammy content. So I blocked her. Okay, so let's see here. Um, Nancy says, my husband said, saw you on break. I said, nope, off. Said, you on break. I said, nope, off housework. Sonnet is on. Husband wish I got the attention Sonnet gets, LOL. <laughs> I love it. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
She said they are so very cute. Oh, good. But why is she using my name? I don't. I think she just um, clicked on you and was adding a link. So I think she probably because you commented, she's somehow attaching a link for you to view, Kathy. So I deleted all the comments. So that is gone. Um, I highly encourage nobody to click on any links. <laughs> Um, that is just, I would definitely not recommend doing that. All right. So now what I'm going to do is just try to match up the size with a drill bit. And we're going to just try to, so as I was saying, somebody said we could drill into the bottom of these. So I think I'm going to try, um, Lily says, you could have one of your viewers to become a moderator, then they could delete comments and block people for you. That's a great idea, Lily, but guess what? It just started happening. I, maybe that means I'm getting more uh, people on my lives. <laughs> the last two, uh, the, the last two episodes, but literally on Wednesday it happened, and then today. Um hold down on the person's name that you want to moderate. Okay. Um, I will definitely look into that. So I'm not going to do it now, but I will definitely look into it. So we're going to try this guys. So I have a little tiny drill bit and what I'm going to do is we are going to try to drill a little hole in here and see if it works. Okay. Okay. That doesn't seem like it's working. Let me try one more time. Maybe I need a different bit. Kind of keeps sliding. Okay. Okay, I got a little hole. That's good, good, good. So the other thing I want to mention when you guys are using the drill bit, be very careful. Um, you don't want to drill your finger. If um, I'm trying to remember... So I'm holding it. I think it was my middle. I lost my nail from this last summer when I was make, building barn quilts. So, okay. I think what I'm going to do is just drill a little bit further. And then we'll, um, how many of you that are watching are within driving distance of Kenosha, Wisconsin? I don't know, but that's a good question, Joan. Um, Lily says, yes, more people in your lives. Same thing happened to me lately. Once they become a, a moderator, they can stay being a moderator for future videos. Oh, good. So Penny says she's within um, driving distance. Uh, Shelly says, not her. She's in South Alabama. Hey, Joan, I am in Racine County with a booth in Kenosha. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to just drill a little bit deeper here. Okay. All right, guys. So let's see how we're going to do this. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to first figure out how far this is going to go in. Okay, so it's going to go in about that far. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a bunch of the Gorilla Glue to it. All right. And then what we're going to do is we are going to put it in like that. And there is a little bit of excess on the bottom. I think what I'm going to do is just wipe away a little bit of it, but I want some of it to stay to kind of hold it. All right, so we have that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to set this down and we're gonna do the next one. Okay guys, guess what I lost? The top of my glue. <laughs> okay, if anybody sees the top of my glue, let me know. 
How could I have lost the top of my glue? Good Lord. Oh, right here. Because it's white and it looks like a mushroom. <laughs> ay, 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 right? Okay. So let's do this. All right. Hel Good morning, Kathy. Uh, Joan says, um, let's see here. I know a restaurant with a party room, and I thought it would be fun for some of us to get together and watch Sonnet on TV while working on a craft. <laughs> they also have a buffet lunch available. Wow, that would be awesome. Gosh, it makes me want to come down to, res well, where are you guys, Kenosha? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? We could host a live right from, well, if they would allow it. And you guys could all be with me together. Floral wire won't stick in my soil. Oh, okay. Well, here in Wisconsin, we have clay. We have really thick, hard clay. So that's why I decided to use this. But... If I, in the future, were going to do this project again, what I would get is something a little bit more sturdy. And when I went to cast the actual, um, I would actually put it right in it when I cast it so that it would be right in there. Or when I pulled it out, I would poke it in right away. Um, because when you first take these out of the mold, they're a little bit more pliable and soft when you're using the resin. And then after a period of time, they really harden up. All right. But um, what kind of soil do you have, Sheila? Like, is it sandy? Or I, maybe, I don't know. Okay. Let's start with this one. And we'll do this one as well. So what when you do this, you want to start um, a little bit slower and just kind of hold it. And then so once you get that starter like hole, then you can put more pressure on and drill. And then I'm going to pull some of that off. All right. Perfect. Okay. And then I'm going to just check this. Yep. And so it's in about that far. That will be good. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. And add a little bit of the glue, just like we did before. And then we're going to put that in the hole there. All right. And then I'm going to wipe away the excess, just like I did with the other one. And then we're going to just set it down and let it dry. Okay, let's try a smaller one and see how that works. Okay, um, let's see. What is the diameter of the drill bit you are using, Sonnet? Um, let's see here if it actually says on this. Somebody mentioned, why don't you have your readers with you at all times? Why don't you have multiple? Well, um, because I was in denial that I needed them, you guys. And that is why I only have one pair. <laughs> and typically it's it's by my, um, where I do a lot of my work. Okay, let me see. There is... I'm trying to see. There is writing, but it ha this is the box that I got at. Um, I got this whole box of all these bits at the bins. Uh, and there's like corrosion on here, so I can't. It's hard to see. 
Let me see if I can wipe some of it off. Mm. Okay. There is a number on here, but there's so much corrosion on it. I can't see it. What I did though, and what I do for, um, anytime I'm using bits is I measure, I kind of like just, I hold it up to like the wire and I try to make it as close as possible. This was just a little bit bigger than the, um, the actual wire uh, so that I could put the glue in there. So I wish I could tell you guys exactly the diameter of it, but it doesn't say. And I don't know if any of these bits actually say the diameter. So it was funny. I was digging through the bins and this was just sitting there and I go, oh my Lord. Look at all these bits, like every single size that I, I honestly need. So, um, Sheila says, maybe I could pound a metal stake in first and wire the mold onto it. We have a lot of rocks in our soil. Oh, that would be difficult too. Okay. Uh, Lily says, Hey Joan, it's called wooden chair antiques. Just opened last week. You cannot miss my booth. LOL. <laughs> it's large and packed full of jewelry and fun things. Oh, awesome. Amanda says, aha, I'm the same way. I am supposed to get readers and have refused so far. I refuse to admit I'm getting older. Uh, yes, you guys. So, um, I'm in, I, I've been in denial. I do have to tell you that my eye doctor told me that at when I turned 40, he's like, okay, now that you're in your 40s, uh, you, your eyes, you're going to start needing readers, just so you know. And I'm like, oh, it is not going to happen to me. <laughs> no. And he's like, uh, it happens to all of us. And I'm like, no, no. And literally, I felt like I walked out of that office. And I could tell that stuff was happening. And then now that I'm a couple years older, I'm like, oh, Lord, it is getting worse. And so last year during um, Girls Weekend, we always go up to Door County and we were up there and my friends are like, just break down and buy a pair of readers. So I bought these little, I think they're called peepers. So I bought them. And I don't know. I mean, they look okay on me, but I think I'm going to buy a different pair. So we'll see. But yes, I'm definitely in denial. Okay, I am. All right, let's finish these up. Now, where did I? Oh, I'm like, where did I put my... Okay. Did I not open this? Where did I get that other wire? Aye, 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 guys. Um... All right, so I'm gonna cut this one in half as well. And then we're going to do the exact same thing with a few more of these, and then we'll start painting. Hopefully the wire or the glue will have set up by then. So I just am bending it in half, and then I am, the end that I'm gonna poke in the ground, I am just, making it as tight as possible. Do you think Gorilla Glue would hold up, hold to the back and you could glue some type of stake to it? Uh, that might work too. So that is another option. So um, some of these have smaller stems, but possibly if you had a stake, you could try to glue a stake to the back. That might work too. I was just trying to think of what I had and what everybody, what uh, you guys were suggesting on Wednesday. So I thought, well, let's try this. Okay. Oh, Shelly, she has an eye appointment tomorrow. Oh gosh. It's so funny, you guys. I have to tell you a funny story about my mom. So she says to me, I just don't understand why you need readers. I don't need readers. So she wears glasses. So I wear contacts and I was with her and we were like out and about. And we, so I pull out my readers to read something 
because I always carry them with me too when we go places. And she takes off her glasses and puts them on top of her head to read. And I said, that's why you don't need readers, mom, because you're taking off your glasses and that your eyes become readers where I have contacts in and I need readers. So you are virtually having the same issues as me because she acted like, oh, look, that's not happening to me. But yeah, it really is. <laughs> All right, let's see. I got the hole in this one as well. And it's roughly the same um, distance down in there. Oh, you could drill a hole near the top of the mold and hang from a stake that has a hook on it. Does that make sense? Oh, you guys, that would be awesome too. You know, it'd be really fun to make these like um, ornaments for your Christmas tree. So now that Sheila mentioned that, you could drill a tiny little hole for um, a little, uh, I'm trying to, eye hook, the little tiny eye hooks, and you could put that in there. Um, okay. So Kathy says, talk to your eye doctor about doing mano vision. I wear a contact in my left eye and nothing in my right. That way I don't need bifocals and it works. Okay. Those would make awesome wind chimes. Oh yeah. That would be fun too, guys. So many fun ideas with this mold already that we're coming up with. Okay. Let's go ahead and I just want to, all right, perfect, I didn't drill that very straight, did I? Okay, we're going to just set that there to dry, and then let's do, let's try to do a smaller one. I want to include these, these three, so these are smaller. Um... All right. I don't know if this one is going to work, but we're going to try it. This one, I used a bunch of excess, so let's not do that one. We'll do this one. Okay. All right, that worked out really good too. So let's see, I'm just gonna fold this in half. How about a ceiling, how about a ceiling fan pull string ornament? Oh, would that not be the cutest, you guys? That would be so, so stinking cute too. To make a pull string, if you guys were into, mushrooms. It is so cottage core and from what I've been hearing from a bunch of gals in my group that have been doing a lot of shows, uh, when they use the mushrooms, anything mushroom related, they sell like out like crazy. So I haven't um, done a ton. I did mushrooms at Christmas. Oh, Amanda says Sonnen is going to sell out of these molds. Molds, totally, probably, LOL. I love that idea. Is there such a thing as waterproof glue? Um, where is my glue? Oh, right here. I don't know if this is waterproof. Uh, not recommended for exterior use or where moisture is likely. Oh then I probably cannot use that. So I'm going to have to look into a glue that I can use. I think there is another glue that I can use exterior. I have turned them into magnets too. Oh, that's another really great idea. That would be so stinking cute. I'm going to make a bunch of these and put them on my fridge. Great idea, Penny. I like it. Oh, especially the morales. Oh, these, that would be such a good idea. Now I'm, I didn't even think about magnets. Oh. Okay, so you could glue them to a vertical board and then place the board under the soil 
and the mushrooms would stand up. Gorilla has a waterproof glue. Oh, that's good to know. That is, okay, now which one did I draw? This one. Um, that is good to know that they have a waterproof glue. I'm going to have to look into it because I definitely, I do want to put these doors on my trees. I have this vision. I've been thinking about doing it since I ended up getting that mold. And then I never did it last year. And I have a bunch of outdoor projects that I want to complete. And uh, so I love that idea, guys. All right. I'm going to just wipe away a little bit of this glue. Perfect. I'm going to just set that down as well. Okay. Hello, Marley. Thanks for joining. Okay. And the rest of these, I think we're going to use... I think I'm going to just get this one because I think he's so cute. And then we'll use the rest maybe on a book if we have time. The hook I was talking about is a shepherd's hook for the garden. Okay. Yep. All right. Let's see. This one is kind of got a like kitty corner base. So I'm just going to go like this. Try to find the center of that. Um, let's see. I will have to watch the replay. What did I miss? We are using the toadstool mold and we're making some garden art. And everyone's coming up with so many great ideas of how to use this mold. I love the idea of using it for magnets. So you would um, paint them up and then put a magnet on the back. That is such a good idea. I also love the idea of the wind chimes. I love the idea of like possible ornaments by drilling in the top and putting a little eye hook or even using it um, so on a fan uh, with that string coming down. If you guys like mushrooms, you could actually do a double sided. So you could cast it twice and then make it double sided. That would be cute too. Um, let's see here. Oh, that's a good idea too. An old birch log with mushrooms drilled into as garden decorating. The red tops would pop against the birch. I love it. Aw. Oh, that's so sweet, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to have to show that. Aw. Thank you. Um, but I love that idea too. Okay, so I better grab one more. I have to actually... Where in the heck did I make that? Oh, here. I'm like, where did I make that little hole? Right here, guys. I just don't want them all falling out. Because that creates a huge mess. <laughs> Everyone rushes to buy the mushroom mold. Yes. It is. It is. Like, it's been one of my favorites since they came out with it. I just haven't. Like, both of these I thought would be perfect for, like, garden art. I love that idea too with the um, with the white birch and the red top. So I you know I probably should have actually um, looked to see what uh, how I want to paint these. Uh, and now adding wire to her mushroom mold would be able to stick them in the ground. Yes, that's what I'm trying. I'm going for. I'm trying to stick these. Or I will be sticking them in the ground. Okay. Oh, I want to see how much I need to put on here. Okay, okay, okay. Ruth says, yes, Kathy. I wore monovision contacts for years. One for close up and one for distance. When I needed cataract surgery, I had monovision lenses put in. So I still don't need readers or glasses for driving. Good to know. <laughs> So it was a game changer. So I do have to tell you guys, I am, I am like deathly afraid of having things, something to go wrong with my eyes. And just the thought of somebody operating or doing something to my eyes kind of like grosses me out, but I will definitely look into it. 
<laughs> or I, get, I don't know if it grosses me out. It scares me is what I should say. It scares me. <laughs> I, I always think like, that is one thing I do not want to lose. Well, obviously nobody does, but you know what I mean. All right. Um, same for me, Sonnet. Just placed an order for the mold. Woohoo! All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a peek. I don't know how quick this stuff. Okay. So it still hasn't set up. Shoot. All right. We're going to just let these dry a little bit longer. Let's start painting these. So I have a couple old books. Don't get mad at me, guys. They're just. They're nothing special, I hope. They're okay. Okay. Uh, Shelly says, most people are typically scared of the dentist, but I have the dentist and, or I love the dentist and I'm terrified of the eye doctor. <laughs> oh, yes. I just don't want anything. I, I, I yeah, I am kind of afraid of... I'm afraid of both actually, but let's see. Okay. I just want to see how I, we could do this. You could do an arrow sign saying toadstool landing. Oh, that's a great idea too. You could do it. I'm going to pop this up so everybody can see it. So you, we could do an arrow sign saying toadstool landing or lane and attach them to the sign. That is a really good idea. Do I? We could do that now, and then I won't have to do that. I'm trying to see here. Do I have? Um, I do have a board, but nothing like huge. Um, and I don't know if it. I don't think it'd be long enough. But okay, I love that idea. Great idea. Uh, so before I wore glasses, I got so angry that the phone book people were sending out the books with blurry lettering. <laughs> this is funny. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that is a good story, Tony. I love it. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, let's start painting these. Let's just start there and we'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do with them. Okay, so I was thinking, because I have been seeing, like, I remember a lot of people painting them red. I'm going to grab my paints, which I should have grabbed before we started our live. All right. I have all my little paints in here. So we have a couple different reds that we can work with. That's more burgundy. Where I put the reds all on bad on my sink. Oh, good lord. I don't think. Oh, here they are. Okay. So we have cranberry. I almost think like cranberry is going to be better. Or maybe it's this one. Maybe Fort York Red. That's a really bright one, too. Let's move this back so you guys can see. All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to, well, that one is definitely not red. These, this one isn't either. I think these would be really cute red. All right, so let's paint the tops red. And then the stems. What color do you think we should paint the stems, guys? What do you think? All right, I am going to put these on for this. Sorry. But, um, I, well, even so, I, look, I, I went onto the lines a little bit, but that's okay. Because when I paint the stems, they'll be fine. All right. Ooh, I'm really, I like this bright red. I think it's going to really pop in the garden. Like, well, if I would have these in the garden with the red. I'm going to paint some of those big ones with the red. So I like that. This looks really good. So I'm using Fort York Red. I think that looks really good. I like it. 
I'm going to set that there to dry. Okay, so Nancy says burlap and dark wax. Okay, I put gator hide on my molds after I painted them and they have lasted good. Oh, that's good to know. A uh, lighter color, like a taupe, a light taupe. Okay, yeah, a beige color. Okay, then we'll do something light brown, maybe cobblestone or putty colors. That sounds good, I think. So we're going to paint a couple of these red. I um, I'm going to have to figure out, I'm trying to remember the exact color of, now the morel mushroom is like, it's almost like, I'm trying to think like a, a brownish color too. Um, oh, the dark wax will look great and give them dirty fungi look. Yes, I agree. Oh, wrong one. I wanted to, I like the round ones with, um, with the red. And then I feel like it needs like a little bit of a different color to make all of the other, like there's little dots on these. I don't know if you guys can see them. There's little tiny dots. And I think we need to just like dry brush a color like over, over it to make that all really pop. All right. And then we'll definitely do that. That's a great idea about the dark wax. Just like it did with the doors. I really like that idea. Great job. Great idea, guys. Okay, what paints are you using? So I am using all the fusion paints. Uh, I carry fusion now and I like that for, it's just a one step. So if I were using like DIY paint, it's, uh, you know, like a two step where you have to paint it and then seal it. I like that it um, can just be, it's all like all in one. And the cottage colors are very much like that as well. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with the cottage colors from DIY Paint, it, they are uh, curated from Jamie Ray Vintage. And if you haven't heard, they're adding six more colors. And it is a their new paint line, and, and that's their one-step paint. Now, they're continuing to add colors as well. Um, Fusion, see, I didn't know how quickly cottage colors were going to grow. And I decided I wanted an entire paint line to be available to offer. So I am going to have both cottage colors and fusion um, on my website and in my booths. So uh, the cottage colors are real cottagey. So they're really, um, they're just like kind of European colors and are like old, um, like the vintage mint and the vintage pink. They're really vintage colors. And that's what I love about the cottage colors. And then fusion is just a wide range. So let's see here. Um, so if I want to add the door to the front of a birdhouse of raw wood, is there a certain paint or sealant I need to use to keep it bird safe. I think once, I, I think all the sealers are probably bird safe per se. Um, it's just like, you don't want to put food on it for yourself, like with sealers. So it's more like food safe. Um, but most of the sealers I think are, are basically bird safe. Um, oh, all the cottage. Okay. So let's go ahead here and I'm going to all right, let's see. We Okay, so this is Cathedral 2. I'm going to try to find Putty. Oh, Aliquin. That's a good one, too. Let's see here. Okay, so here's Putty. That would be a good one for their bases, for the red bases. That's what I'm going to do. Um, Aliquin, we're going to... I'm going to add that to this one and see what it looks like. Yes, this looks good. Oh, actually, I should have painted one of those big ones red while I had it. Um, oh, boy. Oh, this looks so good, this color, too.
All right. I like that. That looks really, really good. Um, I almost feel like that's not the color of this one. I'm trying to envision seeing a morel mushroom in the woods. Every year when I go morel mushroom hunting, I have to retrain my eye. I know it sounds funny, but it's true. Um, I feel like it's more of like an orangey brown. Uh, let's see here. Is that the sample size you're using? Do you know the price of the small containers? Yes, these are ca called like the testers or samples and they're $7.99. And that would be so fun for kids to make a whole village of doors, mushrooms, flowers, etc. And make a village of magnets that kids can move around to build their village. That would be for the morel mushroom, you could do almost a caramel color on the tops and dry brush a lighter color over it. That's what I'm thinking. I just gotta figure out what color I want. That's a green. All right, awesome idea, Joan. Everyone thinks it's a great idea. Spoopy, hello, Sonnet, LOL, I'm at work. Hello, Beverly. Um, let's see here. I'm just trying to see if I can find like, maybe if I start with this like taupey color and then go over it with a different color. Uh, so many options, so many options, you guys. Oh, there's a metallic, look at that. Some of these I think I've used on projects. The one thing I like about the testers, it's a great opportunity for you to try a color. And then um, if you really like it, then there are the bigger sizes. But these little ones, they def they like, it goes a long way. I was really quite surprised or happily surprised when I first got these, how far they went. Okay, this one I think would wick is a little bit too dark. All right, let's see here. Where did I put my little putty? Um, I'm going to do cathedral taupe is what I'm going to do. Can you hold the morel up to the camera? Is it textured? It is very textured. So I'm going to just hold it up so you guys can see. You see all that texture? That's really how all of them are. All right. So let me, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to do the cathedral taupe on it. Yeah. And then go over it with like this darker color, which do I remember? I think that's Aliquin. So that's what I think I'm going to do. Or even the wax. I could just do the wax possibly over it. You need shadow first. <laughs> I need... So I'm thinking I'm going to go with this and then I'm going to go over it with the dark wax. What do you guys think? I think it, if I have to, then this kind of reminds me of a morel mushroom, like this color. I'm going to have to look. Before I start projects, like when I'm at, do, actually doing them for my, like for a video or whatever, I'm always like Googling everything to make sure I have the color right, if I'm going to be doing something like this. So I probably should have Googled mushrooms before I did this, guys. I always paint the corner on the top of the cap so it's easier to pick a color. Great idea. <laughs> um, that is a really good idea to, to do that. All right. Love that. Um, okay, so we have those four painted. And let me rinse this out. Okay, I just want to keep this. That is Cathedral Tope. I really like Cathedral Taupe. I was talking to my friend Tara. She's in a different state. And she says Cathedral Taupe is one of her popular ones. So I think that's kind of fun. 
and I was telling her what my um, top colors have been, and she was actually really surprised. Um, blue has been a hot color, guys. Uh, so I think blue is going to be making a comeback. Okay, I'm going to try to dry these without burning them. All right. Uh, you could use the storefront stamp or the doorfront stamp, storefront stamp to create a backdrop, but then put the door mold where the door goes for a 3D effect. Ooh, that's a good idea too. Yes, these are fusion paints. And uh, I started offering fusion, I'm trying to think, right before the holidays. So I think like in November, I started offering fusion and they've been going over really well. So both fusion and DIY. They just really complement each other. All right, I'm trying to make these dry a little bit faster, quicker, sooner. I'm gonna set that there. Uh, love the red, it's like a true red. I would have to agree. The, these little red guys you got, so stinking cute. I love it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I want to paint the, um, I almost said the legs, the base or the stem. And then we're going to, once those are drying, then I want to paint one of the bigger red ones as well. So we'll do that. So I'm going to paint, I'm using that cathedral taupe again. Oh, I like it. Oh, do you guys hear my elbow crack? That was loud. Okay. Oh, that looks so good. All right, I like it. And then we have to think, I almost want to add a little bit of yellow to the top. What do you guys think about that? I think a little bit of yellow. Okay. Like yellow dots is what I'm thinking. I'm trying to remember what, like when I had looked up mushrooms in the past, I almost feel like it has, or maybe is it, I think it's yellow. Love the, oh, let's see. I am new to Chic brand paints. Ooh, I haven't heard of Chic brand paints. Is that an actual brand, Chic brand? I haven't heard of them. Uh-oh, got a little red here. Can I just roll with it? All right. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to paint the tops of... Um, the two, actually, I think I'm gonna maybe do a couple different shades of red is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the big one with this red. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do a couple shades of red because that's what I envision like having different colors. So we're going to go back to the Fort York red. I'm just going to add a bit of red to that. And oh, the detail on these are pretty stinking amazing. I love it. Okay. All right. OMG, I do not know what is going on with that. <laughs> oh my 
Oh, Lord. Okay. Let's see here. What did I miss? No, not a brand. LOL. Son, you crack me up. I just mean I still mix my own paints. Oh, <laughs> okay. Got it. I think the dots are white and then dark wax. Okay, we'll do that then. White with dark wax. I don't know why I thought yellow. That's why I Google it. Google knows everything, right? Although I was reading an article or like comments on a, a site and this one person said that they don't ever believe Google. I'm like, really? Because I believe everything Google says. <laughs> or well, maybe I shouldn't, but I feel like Google knows everything. Like, what did I do before Google? I actually probably went to a library and had to look it up in an encyclopedia. I don't know. Oh my gosh, I remember. That's right. My neighbors had encyclop encyclopedias, right? Not yeah. They um I remember when I was doing reports and stuff, I'd always say, Hey, can I borrow your encyclopedia? It you know, I have to use it as a reference. Shucks. Okay. That looks good. All right. I'm gonna set that there. We're gonna rinse this out. We're gonna do a darker one. I think there are some that are yellow dots and they are the poisonous kind. Okay. That's good to know. Do you guys think, what color is this? This is cranberry. There's another red that I want to look for here. Where is Highlander? Oh, I know where Highlander is. It's a big one. It's over here. I'm going to grab that one. That's right. Oh boy, we're going to have this problem again, you guys, trying to get this top off. Highlander, um, this is the paint that I used, the very first one that I used um, when I got it. I made a, a huge project with it. All right, and let me heat this up a tad. So to get this open, like the ones that have been sitting for a while, because you guys, I have not used the Vaseline like you guys all suggested. I heat it up and then I hit it and then I use my twister and it works perfect. All right, so here's Highlander. It's another pretty red. So let's go ahead and paint this Highlander. All right, where, okay, so we got that one painted that red. We're going to paint this one Highlander. Ooh, it's a really deep red. I like this one too. really pretty. Okay. All right. Let me, and then I think I'm going to go back to, I'm going to paint one more of this Highlander. And then I'm going to paint the other one, the Fort York Red. I really like, for the uh, mushrooms, I really kind of like that fork Fort York Red, I think it's really good for the mushrooms. A good red. I mean, there's no bad reds, right? Eh, maybe. All right. Let me... Okay, that's a, I like it. So we're gonna, I like how it has like a contrast of colors and I'm gonna do the little one, that color again. Uh, let's see, once again, wishing I was crafting instead of working. Oh, Shelly, I know. What, work really gets in the way, doesn't it? Definitely gets in the way. I know, like when I used to have to go, oh, you guys, 
oh gosh, now I got glue on me because it's not dry completely. Um, back when I was still working my full-time job, um, it was so difficult to go from, you know, doing this, like creating and running my business to then all of a sudden back in work mode. So I feel your pain because I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. And we're going to paint this one, the Fort York red. That is cranberry. So let me... Okay. Oh my, I feel like I have glue on my fingers. Ay, ay, ay. All right, and then we're gonna dry these and I'm gonna give them a zap and let these dry a little bit more. And then what I'm going to do is we're gonna start finishing off the other ones. I'm very excited for this. And actually what I think I'm gonna do, instead of putting those on a book, I think I'm actually going to make a sign. I like that idea. Toadstool Lane. All right. Perfect. Oh, awesome. I love it. I love it, you guys. It looks so good. All right, so let me, actually, I'm going to do one more thing before I do that. I want to paint the last one, which is the last morale, and I'm going to do the same color as this one. So let me do that. Lisa says she's so late. I hope I don't get into tension. <laughs> that's okay. It is okay. So that's the putty. Cathedral taupe. I'm going to use a cathedral taupe on this one because I want these both to dry so that I can um, add the dark wax. All right. Let me... So with these, um, there is so much detail that you have to really get your paintbrush in each of those little tiny crevices. And I am kind of worried that these will not dry. Well, they should dry because I'm not leaving it really seep or anything, but I should have actually painted this at the same time as I painted the other because we'll, we'll just do the dark wax at the very end is what we'll do. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Penny says, well, Shelly, it's Friday and crafting is in reach. Absolutely. Before you know it, you can craft to your heart's content. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to just zap these really quick. I love them. I'm so excited to get these in my garden. All right, so we talked about putting white on here. So I don't know. All right. Okay. So a real popular one has been Victorian lace. So we'll use that. I'm going to add just a little bit of Victorian lace, I think, then here and there. I wonder. All right, I'm just adding a little drop dots here and there. And one right there, I think. 
We'll do it. Don't can't forget the underside, guys. All right. Aw, he's so stinking cute. All right, we're going to do that. And then this one, I'm going to try to just, we'll see if I can dry brush it over. Or maybe I should just go like this and over all these little spots. This is when I probably should have my readers on, right, guys? Oh, this is so cute. Oh, my gosh. And this is probably when I should have had the camera facing down so you guys could see it. So basically, I'm just touching. There's like all this texture on here. And I am just touching each of one of those little, just lightly dotting it. All that texture. So cute. All right. This one is a little bit like just kind of crazy. I like that. And then this one, I'm just going to try to see if I, well, I was going to try to do that dry brush. I don't think it would work. Okay. And this one has a little texture underneath here, too. That one did not. Okay. And. Okay. So I just added a little bit of texture underneath and then the little dots. So, so cute. I like it. Okay, let me let those dry. These are still a little wet. I use the end of the paintbrush to make dots. Oh, I was using just a really fine tip. But yeah, that would be good too, just the end of the paintbrush. That would be good. I can't paint the dots on, so I use the opposite end of my paintbrush to dot them on. Ha ha. Good job, guys. I love it. Innovative. I just was that, that, that. All right. Okay, so I am really liking the, well, I think is that, put, I think I did use putty for that. I think I am going to use Cathedral Taupe on the bases of all of these. Um, bespoke by Nelly says, or a Q-tip. You can use a Q-tip to paint it on. That's another good idea. Definitely. Um, whatever works for you guys. All right. We're just going to paint the little. All right. Ooh, I like it. I like it. So I'm using now, again, the Cathedral Taupe on this one. Okay, that looks good. I like it. So that one, I just need to add up some little dots. I think to some of them, I'm going to do white. And then I think the burgundy ones, I'm going to do yellow dots. I know that's, um, I can't remember who said yellow is probably poisonous, but that's, that's okay. Can't have all perfect oh my gosh you guys i have to tell you what happened last night <laughs> or yesterday so if everybody's been following along about my journey with my internet and then they finally put a temporarily a temporary line outside 
so two days ago, which days? three days ago, yeah, three days ago, um, this whole crew shows up and they walk up and the, the thing that um, the one guy told me is typically wherever they run the temporary line, that's where they bury that line. And when the first guy came out, I, I, he's like, well, I'll have to run your temporary line around. I mean, it, it, it went all the way into my way, way backyard. And he's like, because we can't run a temporary line over your driveway. But when we run the regular line, we'll just go from, it's just like a short little line. We'll drill underneath your driveway and go to your, your thing. It just makes sense. I said, okay, well, that sounds great. Well, they come out three days ago and I say to them, yeah, you have to run it here. And they're like, no, 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 we're going to run it all the way back. I'm like, are you, you're making like, first of all, double the work for yourselves because of where you're run, where you want to dig. And there is so much stuff back there. You're just not going to be able to dig. Uh, there's just no way. So we, the crew leader comes over, we, we're chatting. Okay. Okay. I, I figure they figured it out. They said they understood what I was trying to say. And um, I go, okay, are we all good? Cause I'm going to go back inside and finish doing what I was doing. Yep. Yep. We're all good. We're all good. I go, okay. <laughs> all of a sudden I hear all these doors shut. The whole crew gets back in their vehicle and they leave. And I'm like, huh, that's interesting. They just like literally left. And, um, I'm like, okay, well, I guess they're not going to do it. So then yesterday I am filling my orders from my website and all of a sudden this whole crew of guys walk up and I walk outside. I'm like, Hey, um, so are you guys back now? You know what to do? Did you bring the right equipment to drill under my driveway? <laughs> the guy's like, no, we're going to drill. We're going to go all the way around where this temporary line is. And I'm like, no, the first guy told me that you're going to drill under and you're going to just go, it's going to save you so much time and energy versus if you guys knew how far they would have, they trench it all by hand with shovels. I'm like, it does not make sense. This is like so easy. So then finally they got it. And then he's like, who was, he's trying to ask me who the other crew is. Like, did I get names? And I'm like, no, I didn't get names of the other crew. And uh, he's like, okay, so they were here, you guys. He said, I'll be here for like an hour. It'll take about an hour. I go, okay. They were here. I can't even tell you. Hours. And they only had this little go distance to go. I can't even imagine how long they'd be here if they actually did what they wanted to do. I'm like, oh my Lord. But my line is now permanent. And I didn't realize they were going to switch it over last night. But they did. So... Long story short, it is all done. Thank goodness. Okay. Oh, you guys, I like that stem with the cathedral taupe. Looks so good. Okay. Um, They're turning out so cute. Martina said, Penny says, will you use dark wax? Yes. So that's what we're going to do. As soon as I get the little dots painted, we are going to use the dark wax. I feel like he needs something. I feel like... Oh, a little bit of cathedral taupe or something on him. Just to add a little dimension or something. I don't know. I feel like he needs something. All right. Yeah, that's exactly what he needed. He just needed a little something, something. Okay. I like it. I just added a little bit of the cathedral taupe to him just to give him a little dimension. And then I'm going to do the yellow on here. And as soon as they're all dry, we still have plenty of time. We were going to add that dark wax. All right. So... I'm going to leave it just laying down and we're going to just 
rough, like I'm going to go kind of over each of, like I said, like kind of like what I did before, each of the raised areas. I'm just going to add a little bit of the yellow. Ooh, I like it. I like how it's kind of like, um, and even if you go out of the lines a little bit over the, oh, look at that, over the raised areas, it's okay. All right. Let me... All right. Sorry, guys. I'm not talking. I'm <laughs> I have to really like study my hand um, to really get it in there to make sure I don't go like it doesn't go crazy on me. All right. Oh, I'm going to just hold that one up. You guys, it looks so good. OK, so that one's done. And let me, on this one, we're, I'm just going to randomly do it all over. And just, like I said, just random. There's a little tiny cap on this one, and I'm just going to. Oh, I don't know if I should have did that. Well, I did it. Okay, so I got him done. He, I think this one's set up. These, I don't know if they did. Okay. I think I should have made it a, oh, maybe I could have even added a little bit of yellow underneath here. I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. <laughs> Sometimes less is more. Sometimes I'm just, I'm like, okay, do I want to do more? Do I want to add more? Do I, what do I want to do? Okay. So we're going to do the same thing with like how we did that one that's yellow, we're going to do the same exact thing, um, but we're going to use the white. So we're just going to go over all the raised areas. This is makes it really easy, actually. Just to slightly wipe over all those raised areas, and it looks so good. Um, okay. Uh, West Coast Contessa asks, uh, when I poured these, what did I use? And are the backs concave? Um, no, the backs are pretty much flat. On a couple of them that um, I used, I just dumped in extra, like I had extra um, resin. And I use the amazing casting resin uh, is what I used. And it's so easy. 50% uh, Part A, 50% part B, so easy to use. And I did that versus um, the wet or the um, clay because I was going to be using them outside. And because I was on a live and I it sets up within 10 minutes. And if you guys, <laughs> if you guys want to see a funny video or a funny live, the very first time. I had not ever used resin and everyone on one of my lives said, you should do it on a live. Use the resin. It's so fun. You're going to love it. And we'll all be here to, you know, help you as you pour. So I went out, I bought this resin and I didn't know there were two different kinds of resin. There is 10 minute resin and then there's 24 hour resin. 
Well, guess what? I bought the 24 hour resin and I didn't discover that until I was, I was pouring it. And then we, that's when everyone told me that I bought the wrong resin, but I literally was, I sat there and I was holding them and they're like, everyone's like, just do it, sign it. Who cares if it's still the, the 24 hours, just try it. So I did it and it worked just fine but I was very scared. <laughs> you had to, to see how scared I was. Okay. Oh, shoot. Why did I get rid of that? And the backs are flat. Yes. Yeah, so when you pour, there is a, a line and you just pour right to that line. And so it is perfectly flat. Um, like I said, the only one that is not flat, I had excess of the resin in the container and it's this one. I'm going to show you the back. It is still flat, but there's a slight lip. Oh, it's hard for you to see it, but there's just, it, there's, I'm going to have to add more glue when I glue that one down. Um, sorry, I was busy for a while. I'm back. Could you please hold up the one of the mushrooms so I could see it? Absolutely. Here are the mushroom, two of the mushrooms that we did. All right. Your inspiration door looks so cool. What is the next step for adding ideas? Okay. My inspiration door, you guys. I have got to get to, I think I'm going to head to Hobby Lobby. And my friend Kristen, uh, who is on here a lot, she suggested that in each one, I add a little clip. So my next step is inside of each of the center frames, I'm going to paint it black. And then I'm going to add a little um, like clip. And then I can clip all my inspirational scenes or my to-do list. Um, and I might even add a couple clips, like maybe one right over there, one down there. Um, just randomly, and then I can have additional stuff on there. So that's the next step for my door. But I have not had the opportunity to get there. <sighs> Cheryl says, just got on. What's up? Where are you putting the mushrooms? I am putting the mushrooms in my garden. So what we did is we added wires. So I'm going to stick them in the ground. Um, what we're doing right now is we're, oh, I wanted to add a little bit more white to this. And then after these dry, we're going to add some dark wax. So I'm just going to do the white. We still have 20 minutes. So, just, so it should give it enough time to set up to dry. All right. Let me just... Add a little bit of the dots here and there, you guys, for this. I'm going to zap them to make it dry just a little bit faster, sooner, quicker. And then hopefully we can add some of that dark wax before. Oh, that's a big dot. I better add a bigger dot over here. Okay, that looks good. Awesome. Okay, we're done painting. Let's get them dry. And then we will go to town with the dark wax, which is over there. I love them. I think they're going to be awesome. So cute. Ruth said, great idea for changing out ideas. Yes, I thought so too. My friend Kristen has so many good ideas. Whenever I am like stumped about something with whatever I'm doing or need a, an additional like inspiration, she always is a great resource. She um, does have her page on Facebook. 
and for the life of me, I cannot. It's got her name in it, something with Kristen. So I I will post it. But she's super super creative. Um, on the small mushroom that isn't flat, you can use an exacto knife to take it down to the flat again. Oh, good idea. Yeah, it's just a tiny bit. I mean, it's I like I said, I had a little bit of extra. And I dumped it in, and then I had a little extra from the next set, and I dumped it in, and it's just, I mean, it's not, it's ever so slightly concave. So, um, but great idea. Okay. Now, let's start with, I just want to make sure this is all dry. Okay, we are going to first start with the uh, morale, you guys, and we are going to add some dark wax. So what we need are the dark wax and I, and some paper towel. So let me grab the paper towel. Just All right. Okay. Just like we did with the doors, we're just going to add a little bit, get a whole bunch of dark wax and like all the crevices, and then we are going to wipe away the excess. Oh, that's a good idea too. Um, Kelly said, also the concave area may work good just on the tree if you glued it on a tree. Yeah, because of the bark and stuff too. Okay, so I'm going to add the dark wax to the whole mushroom. Okay. And then we're gonna wipe away the excess. So let's, oh my gosh, Nancy says, my phone never rings. Watching Sonnet and every telemarketer marketer in the world calls. True statement. Oh, this reminds me of um, a gray morel mushroom. So they, they call them gray, um, but they're really dark like this inside, you guys. Oh, does that not look amazing? I love it. I will definitely put that out there. Okay, so I want to have that same effect for this one. I just want to make sure oh my gosh that it turned out so stinking good I love it turned out even better than I had hoped I love that when that happens okay All right, so I'm just going to hold this and then wipe away. Looks so real. It totally looks real, you guys. Honest to God. It with all of that detail. Um, and that's exactly what a morel mushroom looks like. Like with the coloring. So good. All right. So here they both are. Oh gosh, these look so good. It totally looks like a morel. I'm from Wisconsin. Woohoo! We accomplished it. Yeah. Okay. The next one we're going to do is this one. I'm just going to Yep, it's it's all dry. So we're going to do the red top with um so we used uh the colors that we chose for this one was the the red itself is Fort York Red. We used Victorian Lace and then we used Cathedral Taupe. So let's go ahead and add the wax to this. And you guys are gonna see that there's so much detail on these. It's so good. Um, I just love using wax to bring out detail. I've been actually using dark wax or like waxes a whole lot more lately. I just love it. All 
Okay. All right, got in all that detail, let's see. So now I'm just gonna wipe away any of the excess. And oh, does that not look like a mushroom trunk? Like if you get by it at the store, like the that coloring, I think it totally does. Okay. Then we're gonna wipe away some of this excess on here. And I'm gonna just show you guys what this one looks like. That one looks so good too. I love it. Okay. And then let me grab this one. Lisa said, those are amazing. Bespoke by Nelly says, so good. These are turning out so well. These are turning out so good, you guys. Okay, so now we're going to do the little one. Just going to hold on to it. So I really think the um, color that I like the best, well, I don't, it's the only color I tried, but I really like how um, the cathedral taupe with the dark wax, it really, it looks like a mushroom to me. Like it looks like a mushroom stem. So I think that is definitely a go, go to for me. All right. So, all right. Here's the yellow. So the yellow doesn't, I mean, it still shows yellow, but it just doesn't pop as much as it did with the, I guess if I rub it a little bit more over the yellow, I can make it pop a little bit more. Um, so uh, I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to leave the top as is. I'm not going to add the dark wax to that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the dark wax to like this, the underbelly of it and to the stem. And we're going to see what that looks like. Is it called the underbelly? <laughs> I don't even know. I just make things up as I go, you guys. Like, what is it called? I don't know. All right. The gills. It's called the gills, not the underbelly. So we're adding it to the gills. I can remember that. I, it's like it's like fish have gills. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. Here's that one. I like it. I think it turned out so good. And I like how the yellow still pops and it just adds a little bit of, brings out all the gills, um, the look of it. So that's good. All right. Let's do this one. Guys, I need to, now I'm going to make more of them. <laughs> I want, I definitely want to add uh, some to my refrigerator for magnets. I think that'll be so good for that. I'll be casting all kinds of morel mushrooms. I'm sure then my brother will see it and then he'll have to have a morel mushroom on his fridge. I'll have to make him one. I know what I am doing this weekend. Luckily, I own this mold already. <laughs> this is such a fun project, you guys. Oh yeah, this one turned out so good too. I love it. And then let's get these last little ones, these little guys. All right, so we're just gonna add a little bit of the wax to, the, to all of them and then wipe them down. And this one has a lot, well, I, they all have a lot of detail. I was like, this one has a lot of detail in the, the stem, but honestly, they all have a lot of detail in the stems. All 
All right, let me. So if you didn't want to add any of that to the top, you can actually just do the stem even if you want it. If you really, you know, like that bright, vibrant red, you can just do the, the stem. And then this one, I'm just going to All right, and then that one too looks, that one, that one that has, is just, I think I did it, um, I think I would have preferred it in Cathedral Taupe, and I think we did this in Aliquin, so that one was a little different, but I want to show you these, if you decide you don't want to paint the top, because you like that bright red, you can definitely do that, so let's, I'm going to hold them up, so you guys can see, so here are the morel mushrooms. Those look so good. And then here are all the, the big ones. So I don't know if you, I hope you guys can see them. I'm trying, I'm trying to hold them all up. So those are the big ones. And then um, we got our little babies. And I think I'm going to make a sign. That says like toadstool way or lane or something like that. So let's look at comments and see what everybody thinks. Let's see. All right. Um, Bespoke by Nelly said, this was awesome. I just found your channel this week and I'm so glad I did. I love your creativity and tickled that you were in the Midwest too. Woo, thank you. Thanks for finding me and joining. I love it. Um, what do y'all think would be a good price if these were made into magnets and in a booth? So what I would have to do or what I'd recommend you do is see, I can't even remember what I paid for the casting resin um, and then cast them and maybe see how many you can get out of one resin and how many and like divide it up by that. Um, but has anybody sold magnets like this in their booth? And what did you price them for? I haven't yet, but I will have to do some investigating. If you're going to glue them onto something or glue on a magnet, should you not put wax on the back? Yes, I did not add wax to the back. I only added the wax to the front. Do not put wax on the back. Otherwise, you will, you'll probably have to get that wax off in order to put the magnet on. Nancy says, Shelly, I'm terrible at pricing. Um, me too, Nancy. So that's why I would look to see what the casting resin costs. Again, I'm going to have to look it up to see how much I paid. And then you probably can cast a ton. Um, and then I would say like the big ones, you probably could get a lot more for. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm going to have to look. I'll have to, like I said, I can't remember what it, it priced at. Uh, Lynn says, good job. I'm a bit late coming in. Can I ask which red you used? I'm hoping I already have it. So I used two different reds. I used uh, the Fort York red and I used Highlander. Um, when I added uh, the dark wax, the um, the it actually, the Fort York red actually started looking like Highlander but I still like it. There's, you can definitely tell the difference in the reds. So something to think about. Um, I buy the resin from Michael's when I get half off coupons. Oh, that's a good, that's good. Definitely. Um, need a couple of frogs too. Yes. You guys, I should have brought, broke that one out too. That's another good, um, mold. Um, it's otherwise normally $25 a container. Okay. So $25 for this. And you can pour a lot of items from that. All right. Kelly says, so stinking cute. Make sure you buy strong magnets. My pet peeve is buying a magnet and it slides down the fridge. <laughs> Mine too. Uh, Eight to $10 on big ones, maybe. That's what I was thinking. I actually was thinking like, um, maybe like $10 on the big ones and, you know, the smaller one. Honestly, I think around here, these, I could definitely price at much higher. 
um, the uh, morels because they're very, very popular in our area. Uh, those are so cute. So true, Joan. I came in late, but what are you doing with the mushrooms? Um, I am actually taking my mushrooms that I have the stakes in and I'm going to stake them by a tree out in my flower or my gardens. Um, so I'm definitely going to do that. And actually what I plan on doing, I am going to put them against a tree, but I think um, I didn't want to waste the time today. Uh, I just wanted to keep on going. I'll probably add red to the back and then the, the cathedral taupe to the bottom, just in case somebody sees the back. Uh, they'll be against a tree, like I said, or near it, like staked near a tree, but still. So that's what I'm doing. All right. So um, I am going to get off here. I'm going to quick edit my video for today. Um, and it will be up hopefully by five if I get everything edited properly. And uh, so then out on YouTube, I will have a new video. Uh and let me think. Monday. I'm not sure yet. Uh, is there anything you guys want to see? Um, let me know real quick before we go. Otherwise, I'll just come up with something. But I've been having like a ton of fun playing around with the molds. I was thinking maybe, um, you know, in honor of the IOD release, I've been featuring some of the older IOD products um, because don't they're still so stinking cute. So you guys can't forget about the other IOD products as well, right? Uh, Kelly says that morels are popular in the Upper Peninsula, Peninsula too. So yes, they are very, very popular. Um, and so I think they would go over really, really well. So I'm definitely going to be casting a bunch more of these guys. And I love these big ones. Um, that would be really good, though, to have magnets like that. So I love that idea. Uh, spring fever and spring things. Okay. I got it. We'll do something springy on Monday. Cause I too am like really feeling all things spring. Um, and then just so you guys know, I am also, I just ordered all of Royce's new papers. So that will be coming out and, uh, you guys are going to love them. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Uh, about that as well. So um, our local mushroom festival is in May. Might make a whole bunch of these for that. Oh, you should definitely do that. That would be so good. Um, Shelly says, I like the idea of using an older IOD products in prep for the new release. Yes, I, I will definitely pull out some older, like, but springy items. So we'll definitely do that. Amanda says, yay, new papers. I know. I'm so excited about the new papers. Um, Emily says, good morning. Hello, Emily. And I am ready to sign off. So you guys have yourselves a great weekend. And then we will see you Monday. And then we're just think spring. Just we're going to think, think spring. Um, oh, Kelly says maybe the frog mold. Maybe. Do drop pond. I might be breaking that out. We'll see. Um I'm like a kid at Christmas this month with all the new releases. Yes, I am too. Um, but yeah, I definitely cannot wait to start showing them all to you. All right. So remember, the live is scheduled for next Friday for the new release. I will be going live at 1130 versus 10 o'clock. Okay. Um, or maybe I'll, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Oh, no, I scheduled it for 1130. So nope. We're going at 1130. All right. Well, you guys have a great weekend and we'll see you Monday. And then don't forget to check out my latest video. Bye guys.